So here's nine tips for kayaking with action cameras. Over the years, there's a lot of little things that I've been doing that have been making my time with my cameras a little bit easier in terms of getting better footage, but also enjoying myself a little more and not being so dependent on filming it. But I want to mention that a lot of these are just my preferences. They're not right or wrong. So the first thing that took me a little while to get is framing. I'm a big fan of the rule of thirds. If you don't know about the rule of thirds in photography and videography, usually if you put things along the vertical or horizontal thirds, it makes for a more interesting composition. So what I like doing a lot is if I mount my camera on the kayak or if I'm using it in certain ways, I'll mount it so that I can be in the third and then I can have plenty of space to either one side or the other so that people can paddle alongside me. I just find that to be a little more interesting than just a camera pointing straight at me. I also like pushing it away from me either in the front or the back just enough to see other people and then to see the scenery because a lot of times if it's just a close-up of myself I just don't find it to be as interesting. However if I'm going to be doing certain things where I am the center of focus let's say if I'm surfing and I want it pointing right at me I might center the camera for that because because my expression or the waves hitting me will be the most important thing happening. But if I have it mounted, let's say on my helmet or I'm taking a picture while holding it, a lot of times I like having it centered because the wide angle on these cameras will distort things quite a bit. So I like centering it in a way so that that distortion doesn't really take away from the photo. A lot of times if I catch the wrong angle or there's a kayak that is really warped or someone that's over on the edge, it just doesn't look as nice. And along with framing and what I just started talking about is changing locations of your shooting. If you shoot all day and it's exactly in the same position, it probably won't be as interesting as if you change location. So for example, well, I'll use lots of different mounts. I'll have a suction cup that I like putting in different places on the kayak. I have a clamp that sometimes I clamp in different places. You can have stickies either mounted on your helmet or on the kayak itself. And one thing I really like doing is I have this shoulder mount that I'm able to reach the camera very easily. I'm able to record action and then I'm able to open it, take it out and then shoot with it and then clip it back into place. So I just find this to be very versatile. You don't need to go crazy trying to get angles non-stop. That's one of the mistakes that I used to do in the beginning. Try to catch every single angle, but maybe getting a couple of different angles as you stitch them together might make for a little bit more interesting of a video rather than just sitting in one position the entire time. Tied with that, I want to get to the next point, which is you don't have to capture everything. As I mentioned before, that was one of the mistakes I used to make. And then I'd come home, I would have tons and tons of material, and then I would use this much of everything I caught that day. I have figured out the things that I like shooting, just like in my drone video, where I explained some of the angles I like shooting. And as I mentioned before, that's all preference. It just depends on what you want to capture. I like capturing when people are putting things away in the kayak. I like showing once we get somewhere because I think that gives you continuity throughout the video. And then I like having a couple of different clips while we're out on the water. And I also don't let the camera run too long either because really one of the things that I was finding is that I was not really having as much fun as I should because I was worrying about filming rather than just enjoying myself. And then one thing that's happening a lot lately is most of my buds have their own cameras. So at the end of these events, we usually do a data dump. Everybody shares all the videos together and then and everybody uses whatever they'd like to use. Now, a question that comes up often is, what frames per second settings should I shoot at? Should I shoot in slow motion and then have very large files? Should I shoot at 24 frames per second and make it very cinematic? Should I shoot at 30? Can I even notice a difference? For me, when I got started with action cameras, I used to shoot at 30 frames per second. I really liked how it showed action and you got to get to see everything. But as the years went by, I found myself going more and more to 24 frames per second. I just think it has a nicer feel. If you're slowing footage down, you're shooting at let's say 60 or 120 frames per second. Those extra couple of frames for 30, 224 actually allow you to slow that footage down even further. So 60 looks better when slowed down at 24 than 60 slowed down at 30. And the same goes for 120. You get to slow it down just a little bit more. And so I find that I just really enjoy the way that looks. Test all the different settings and see what you like shooting at. When it comes to slow motion, if I know that I'm gonna be doing something specific that might look really cool, then I'll set the camera up for 120 frames per second. If you know that there's gonna be a chance 
of you slowing down, but you want to shoot throughout the day, 60 frames per second is usually a nice compromise because it'll still look nice and you get a bit of slow motion if you wanted to throw it in here and there. So many devices nowadays can shoot 4K video, but is it really necessary? 4K is spectacular for establishing shots or vistas or things where the background is not moving very quickly. However, if you see a kayak moving very quickly and a paddle flying in in 4K or lots of water and waves moving around, I actually like shooting some of those things at lower quality because I think it just looks a little better. Once again, preference. Things that have a lot of movement, I like shooting in either 2.7K or even 1080. So what I'll do is I'll usually shoot a little bit bigger, compress down to 1080, upload to YouTube. A lot of new cameras are coming out with stabilization, fantastic stabilization. And the same goes for gimbals. They're a lot more affordable and they're a lot smaller so they're easier to use. But when should they be used? This one also I think is preference, but I'll share what I have found that I think looks better when I'm editing my videos. If it's mounted on your helmet or it's handheld, definitely use stabilization because it'll just make things look really smooth. It'll make you look like you're gliding. It'll look fantastic. However, if you mount a camera on something that moves a lot, let's say your kayak on your bow pointing back, I think it looks crazy with stabilization on because the stabilization is actually trying to counteract the movement of the kayak. I found that to be very counterintuitive. And the reason I think is if it's on the kayak, it's really nice to see that even though everything around the kayak is moving, the actual kayak is stationary relative to the camera. So I find that if it's mounted on the kayak, you want stabilization off. Let's say you're in the car and you're shooting out the window, stabilization on. You're walking around, stabilization on. Helmet, shoulder, stabilization on. But it's up to you, definitely test and see what you like best. This next one is crucial and I've mentioned it every time I talk about mounts and that's tethering your gear down always have some kind of bungee or a cord or something that's going to hold it down in case the mount fails. And then if I'm going to be playing in rough water or I'm going to be in a location where there's a chance the camera could get knocked down, I'll actually put a tether on the camera itself or at least on the mount of the camera because sometimes that could fail and then your mount will still be on and the camera will be gone. So tether your equipment down every time you go. I tether it down from my helmet down to one of the straps. And as you see here, if it's on my shoulder, it's also tethered down to my PFD. I have found that if I make a video using only action camera footage, it becomes a little bit hard to watch. It's always good to try to mix in at least one or two clips from something else. Now, it doesn't have to be a fancy camera, it doesn't have to be anything. This is where I think phones with video capabilities are very useful because just shooting a little bit on your phone here and there and mixing that in will change the way the video feels and the video looks. Let's say while you're sitting having lunch or while you're packing your gear, it's always nice to have a little bit of a change. Try it next time. Take out your phone, shoot a couple of seconds here and there of just some other stuff and mix it into your video. You'll see how much more interesting your video becomes if you have a whole bunch of action camera shots mixed in with a couple of shots taken with something else. And lastly, this one's a little bit of a cop out, but I really wanted to mention it. Don't be afraid to play, to test, use all the different settings, see what works for you. Do you like color grading, color correcting? Okay, then go flat on your colors. Do you like spending time speeding things up and slowing them down? Play with all the different speeds, see what you like. If you like surfing, see what speed you like slowing things down to so that the water looks really cool. Stabilization, no stabilization, different frames, wide, medium, narrow points of view. Test all these different settings and see what works for you. One thing I'll mention about wide, medium, and narrow, you gotta be careful with those settings because a lot of times in the narrow setting, yeah, you'll get something a little bit flatter, but you're getting less of the sensor, so the quality of the image, the quality of the video won't be as good. Most action cameras also have time lapses. Play with those. See if you like two seconds, five seconds, 10 second intervals. Try them at night. See if you can get really cool cloud movement overhead or if you wanna get the tides coming in and out. Because because it might turn out that after months of shooting stuff in a certain way, you might like something completely different and the setting was just two or three taps away. So like I said several times, this is all about preference. These are things that have worked for me. You might use cameras differently if you're hiking, if you're riding your bike, if you're on a motorcycle or you go in a car. But 
when in a kayak, for me, these are things that have worked. So I hope that was helpful. If there's anything you do differently or anything you want to add, let me know. Or if you want to ask any questions, please comment below. Subscribe if you like. I'm always trying to put these videos out. And as always, Luke Grover, Kayak Hipster. Thank you for watching. See you next time.